See, what's interesting is, uh, I think both of you made this comment in a different sort of way, which is that India is leading. India is no longer following, right? Both in fintech and blockchain, we have a leadership stature in the world. In the IT outsourcing days, we were the receiving end of the so-called advanced technology. We were taking care of stuff that was either sunsetting or in maintenance mode and so forth. But now we're in the innovation. We finally have reached a point in certain segments like fintech and blockchain where we are the cusp of innovation. We are the leaders that other people in the world want to pursue and emulate in some sense, right? So one question about, and I know that when you worked as a CTO of a bank like DCB, and DCB's dream is to be a digital bank, how do you translate your you know, world of Infosys experience coming from an IT sector and to become a chief technology officer of a bank that is going digital at a rapid rate? What was your journey like there, Samit? So uh, from, a, from an exploitation perspective, it's, a, it was a, it's an interesting bank to work with. Uh, the top business is very well aligned to the thought process of uh, moving digital. Uh, for example, uh, we, we created a sort of a India industry's first Aadhaar-based ATM. Um, and the idea just germinated when we started discussing that when Aadhaar has come, how we can create some unique propositions around that. And we, and I mean, MD was on board immediately and we created, co-created the structure at the business level. And implementation, given that India stack was there, was so easy for us to do. So world's first Aadhaar-based ATM we could create almost like instantaneously. Uh, from a, from a, let's say, digital origination, I think we have taken leadership position, uh, t- tying up with fintechs. I think that's originally, uh, if you look at any any of the board structures, any of the boards talking about fintech, you would not find a strategy of any of, one of them talking about it. But our bank actually took a strategy saying that fintech will be one of the critical portions of alignment. Right? So what we did was we started tying up with them and started learning from the, them as well. So we ran a lot of... Uh, what do you say, innovation hacks kind of activities with them. So what I, I realized is that when you talk about pure tech, which is a, it's a what you learn in Infosys, and you talk about business, which is right now running, they're actually merging together. So you start applying the levers of technology in either side, on the front end side, or on back end side, you can actually change the whole game. And just to tell you one very basic perspective, uh, maybe it's a very different point. Uh, what I also realized that a lot of people think of app as the ultimate of a customer experience is the only thing which you have to look at. I think what I want to talk, tell, tell about is that FinTech is not about just front end. FinTech is a lot about back offices. So how do you ensure that back offices are just not there? Yeah. We can't have long tails of back offices which, where you have hundreds and thousands of people processing paper. So I think front end have to be changed and back ends have to change. That's a journey which we could create in, in, in DCB. So if the customer originates from somewhere, we have to ensure that the termination of activity happens right there. Mm-hmm. That's what we tried a lot in that journey. Right, right, right. I'm just watching the, I'm seeing some great questions flip by and I'm actually making a mental note to come back to some of them very soon. Before we do that, one question uh, for you, uh, Ritesh, that uh, if you look at, you know, I, I know that you mentioned this, but blockchain is an area that uh, you have really, really embraced as one of the big areas for yourself to build this expertise on. And then, you know, you've, not only are you consulting and building solutions in blockchain, you are now teaching blockchain, which is part of this program. Uh, what Can you give us, can you share with the audience one good example that will really open their minds to what blockchain technology can do and why it is such a profound technology? Can you give us one, share with one good anecdotal example uh, for the audience's benefit that this is the difference between having blockchain and not having blockchain? Could you yeah, give us absolutely. Uh, yeah. That's a great question. Thanks for asking this. Like, uh, I know... Uh, I can't hear the audiences, yeah. but obviously, I just want to ask them to or just think through if they have actually bought a CD in last two years, a music CD. Have any of you have bought a music CD in last two years? Yesterday, I was in an audience of more than hundred people asking the same question, and nobody raised their hand. Not a single person raised their hand. Now that talks about a lot for the music industry. Mm. few years back we all were crazy about buying music series mm. I'm just watching the feedback nobody has said they bought a CD in the last two years so okay. we're good to go yeah okay so, yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure nobody I'm sure because I, do, I don't see music series being sold also in the market these days right uh, not much actually so if, but if you go back few last years we were all crazy about buying music series whenever there was a new launch and we all we wanted to come home about the music we mm. want to listen and, and that's so the way we were doing it but what has happened? What has propelled this change? How does the music industry undergo these changes? So I just wanted to take you back through a bit of history about that. Mm-hmm. And, and there's some element of blockchain that we eventually I'll, I'll bring it to it. 
is that in the 90s, the way music industry used to work was there was a composer, there was a distributor and a marketing company and there were obviously listeners. And it was a job of a distribution and marketing company to collaborate between both the music listeners and the composer. And the music composer and the, and the, and the listeners were not indirectly in touch with each other. In fact, the only person who knew about them was the distributor. And he, this distribution company, though he was not the owner, they, they were not producing the music themselves, they, used, they were earning a majority portion from selling this music. Now, in the 90s, there was a big innovation and a big launch of a new company called Napster that happened. And when Napster launched, it launched a new technology called peer-to-peer -peer networks. And peer-to-peer -peer networks are, have a tendency in no matter which industry you launch, it's disruptive in force. It can change the way business model works. It can change the way your business innovation happens and propel it to a different direction altogether. It has that kind of power, not at the organization level. I'm talking at the industry level globally. And that's what happened. When peer-to-peer -peer network launched by Napster, the music lovers, fanatics, they started sharing music among themselves. themselves yeah. So a composer was free to compose without even getting into a contract with a distribution company mm. and able to share his music and charge whatever he wanted to charge. So there was no bonding between a company. So intermediaries were being eliminated. Exactly. So yeah. the, you don't need these agencies in between. Now tell me an industry where you don't have intermediaries and agencies. There's no such Almost thing. every every industry has it. So if you can launch this peer-to-peer -peer network in any industry, it has this potential of getting disrupted automatically. So in the future, we could buy our cars online from the manufacturer. That Why not? Example. Yeah, Why exactly. not? Absolutely. And so, but there were a few challenges uh, at that point of time. When you think about peer-to-peer -peer network, you don't inherently trust everybody that's there on the network. Mm. You, so, what blockchain did, it integrated, it brought in the level of trust and integrity within the peer-to-peer -peer networks. And when you have such a network with integrity and trust built with the participants among them, you are in blockchain world. And as I said, you can disrupt industries and if you can bring trust, there's nothing like it. Yeah. So what actually happened, there was a level of, there's an atomic transaction that happens. Now you gave an example, I gave an example of music industry, I just I want to elaborate a bit more on that. I want to buy a car from you, you mentioned about the car. How would I typically buy today a car? I would either pay you mm. and you will deliver the car after 10 days. What is the guarantee that you are going to get me the car after 10 days? There is no guarantee, even though if there is a contract. Now, the other solution that can come is there could be an intermediate who can sit in between as an escrow and I can pay my money to the escrow and you can bring your car to the escrow. But what is the guarantee that this person will exist? After he will not run away. He will not run away, right? Why are you looking at him? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not you. Somebody <laughs> like you. <laughs> yeah. So, you need a level of trust yeah. between all the participants. And, <laughs> and, and there has to be a level of not only trust, it has to be an atomic transaction. Yeah. What I mean by atomic transaction? Mm. Give by one hand, take by another hand. Mm. Which does not happen. And blockchain has that power to bring that on the ground. By using something called smart contracts. Yeah. So, so that's what smart contracts that's are. That's what smart contracts okay. is all about. So that that I codify the language mm. of contracts mm. in a way that we can do atomic transaction. Mm. You give me the money yeah. and you get that asset. So either the whole thing happens or nothing happens. It's a completely complete. Absolutely. What we call asset transaction in databases. Exactly. Yeah. So there is no possibility that if you are paying a consideration that yeah. you're transferring a virtual asset, a, a digital asset. You're not getting back your Got it. Okay. So I'm going to ask a similar question to you, Samir. Um, you know, I mean, I think the last two years, in particular in India, it's been an enormously productive and very exciting years for the whole fintech industry. I think India has taken the world by storm by all its innovation. So which of these innovations are you most excited about? I mean, what is, if you had to give one fintech example that you feel like, you know, India's produced something for the global market, this is like a shining example of how fintech will work in the future. It doesn't really have to be an Indian example either, but mm -hmm. I just want your thoughts on what is exciting you about this space? I think uh, if you look at the current scenario, the amount of work which is happening around the lending area is phenomenal. Lending. Mm -hmm. uh, in lending side, so I think I would put it that on payment side, a lot of business has already happened. 
and then government has helped through UPI and then frameworks are created. Yeah. I think that's one side which is largely solved uh, given that bank, Indian, Indian government also acts almost like a startup, right? So yeah. they have provided a lot of railroads to the country. Uh, I'm sure they'll Aadhaar. be excited to hear this comment from you. Yeah, uh, very nice. So yeah. Be it Aadhaar or be it, so I, I, I don't know if, if people know, uh, all of our data is right now in, in, in digital lockers and that actually is, is available on a consent architecture which can be used for any process. So you can, the government actually has almost removed the the, the middleman in, in between. But anyway, we are coming back to the digital lending. Today, if I if I were to look at lending by a bank or lending by a fintech, I have seen people doing lending almost on an instant and instantaneous basis. The government regulations also allow for lending to happen even on a Aadhaar OTV basis or to a limited extent. So we have seen lot of startups doing onboarding the customer on their own and underwriting the whole process on an instant basis based on machine learning and processing the transaction end to end. Which means that if you request for a loan, your ability to get a loan on an instant is not bad at, at all now, given that lending fintechs are doing a lot of good work on it. Uh, they are able to underwrite, they are able to get your data. For example, uh, let's look at uh, uh, this Vijay Malaya's case, right? So he ran away. Now this information would have reached the government or, or even the bank offices a bit, bit late. What if this this information was actually tracked through 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 bots in the system and APIs were there which are you which are consumed for validating the transaction and you can immediately do a freeze on the account. So there's a lot of work which is happening around lending, which is creating a unique model. Mm -hmm. Just an extension of that is P2P lending, where we are seeing as we as, as Ritesh was talking about uh, a, a framework where we are saying that peer-to-peer -peer, uh, business will happen. Suddenly, we have a P2P lending regulations now in where anybody can set up a P2P lending with a limited amount of capital, which is two crores. I can establish my own P2P company and I can ensure that customers can come on board on one side as borrower, another side as investor, and they can pay and credit to each other. And in this process, the banks are not there and therefore look at the borrowers. They will get a, a amount at a, lead, a lower rate. And as a depositor, today we are all used to 3.5% of deposits in a savings account. Or maybe I used to uh, maybe something like a six or eight percent in a in a in a deposit account, FD account. You are suddenly used to now sixteen percent because you are also taking bit of credit risk, which is any which way exist in the banking environment, mm -hmm. irrespective of which bank you are. We know about some of the cases which are right running in the market. I'll mm -hmm. not speak about them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's where it is. So lending is the key business in this year. I guess in next one or two years we should say insure tech and investment also picking up. Fabulous.